getting very close to the sharing of my sketch with my client. Just want to put a little extra pizzazz or finishes, maybe a few other things out there first. But um, before I go any farther, I want to make sure that my building is assuming that the client is going to say, okay, go ahead. And I want to make sure that my building is ready to, to actually be constructed. And in the event that the client says, well, let's move this one or that one or whatever. But I know I have to move the, the exterior walls in two inch increments. Like the, like the basement for the contract or so. Two inch even though there's so basement dimensions so basement walls except for these diagonal walls and that's not possible probably to be a two inch increment but you know the basic walls here the horizontal to the front is, should be uh, should be two, two inches so it'll be uh, a, a foot number and then two four six eight ten zero inches following that so getting ready to put my dimensions in into the basement plan because there's stacked walls then the walls should go and change all the way up to the first and second floor which is fine because I'm going to put in some floor finishes and they go to a particular location of the wall so if the wall moves then I have to move the floor itself and I don't mind moving it at the direction of the client, but I don't want to go down the road and then find out that my basement is, is not correct in terms of the increments. And therefore, I have to go do a lot of other additional work, not because the client suggested it, but rather because I was just lazy. So, where I'm going with this is I want to put my dimensions in, in the basement just to make sure that I have the proper dimensions and put some more detail into the drawings and then share that with my client. But uh, from the previous video, I was happy that I wanted my dimensions, my overall dimensions, to be approximately to be about the same distance away from the edge of the building. So this this one has a two-foot overhang on the first floor. And, I, and these reference planes are going to follow through my first floor dimensions. Let's see those reference planes. There. So I have to mention to that. And my second floor dimension, those reference plans follow through again on there. So I will use those for my overall dimensions. So I'm looking for my basic dimension plan. And I put all these tabs that I have on there. I have a couple of jobs in. So it's not going to close both of the tabs that I have open for this other job that I'm working on. It will close every, all the other inactives. So this tab is closed inactive tabs. So now I have I have one uh, tab for another job that I have open right now. I have my dimension based with my design and shape here from my tape on the tabs with my tabs. Right, so let's put our overall dimensions in first. So that is over here. That's it. it is. And then I just use that reference plane to get close. It's not going to snap to it. It will be close. I'm certainly to be by to the horizontal line. And then I want to be here to have the most critical to it. It's another couple inches. So this overall should.
which case there would be some kind of you know, so that you just eliminate that by always having our over dimensions. These dimensions, by always having our dimensions over the left and right at the top and bottom. These dimensions are similar to show what I was using for my reference points. Now I'm going to go back in. I can't snap to that right now. And I'm not too concerned about that, but I would like this guy to be in a moment. It should be. I'll go back and take a look at that. Do I really require that? That should be in. And it is not that. That is not that. It's the base dimension. Not so that straight all the way across here. Better off because then I'll have my offsets. I can understand the not noticing some of the shape here. This is really there's no reason for that. It's not going to go ahead and change that. It should change this. Let's lay out the line. Click on this. Add the different dimensions and make that do what it would have to do. This dimension now is too big. Well, just too many gold, which is good. Because we can't see. Also, like to change the scale here. So let's use that. This thing dimension. That that is good. And the side like this is not good. That doesn't cause a large of anything. So let's see. This guy and drag it over. That is still.
So I'm going to change that to 94. Yes, so I will find that. That wall, I will change that the second one. I change this one up there. Let's see what happens there. Now these don't line up anymore. Which one is correct? That is the best one. So I'll go back down to my first floor dimension. Is outside edge. So, second floor dimension. There's my outside edge. Uh, but the siding overhangs the brick. So, I would want the siding. Siding is an inch. So, I would want the thickness of the siding to be measured. Starts in the starting right there. So, this guy. Stack wall, but it doesn't line up as it should. So let's see what happens if we line up the loops. I want to line up this edge and this edge. I don't know if that's it. It should come back there. I don't know if that's it. This is a unique situation because I need to rotate the section. Write this down. This is this wall is going to have to be thick. It is. Take a look at the way that that wall is constructed. See that I want my stud wall to go straight up. I want my gypsum board to line up. This is my stud, and this is the gypsum board. Let's change that. So there's my gypsum board there. That means that this wall will have to be thicker because it's seen at a height. Okay, it looks pretty good. I want this to be the nine. So that's a five, nine and a half, that's a four, nine and a half. Now I'll just use a reference plane and check if in fact this gypsum board lines up with that. It does. Okay. So this is the correct location of the second floor wall. Let's go to the second floor. So I did change this wall as well. But it really needs to line up back here. What I was looking to do was make sure that these spots back in there and see what happens. All right, and that lets it line. So that automatically changed my square footage. Take the dimensions. Okay, I'm concerned about my base dimensions. So now I got that good. This doesn't doesn't have to be This one does to this guy. One, two. This is good. This one has to come over. So Alright, so I got my nine foot four. And then this is the twelve foot four. That's another base one. Wall, so I'll click on that, activate the dimension, and make that 12 feet. And then 
Let's go to the first one and see what happened there. So now this guy has to change or to change some more to find up. This I'm saying is the correct location. So I just back to the dimension basement. This should be six foot six. So I'll take this wall, which is a stacked wall, and change it to six foot six. Okay, so this is the first floor and see what that so that did also mess up a few things by changing the location of this wall. So let's fix that now. This kind of wall. And okay, that looks good. So we're in much better shape now. I uh, put the plywood subfloor in. When I put the edges of the plywood subfloor in, I did not want them. Therefore, they're not locked to the location of the wall. When I move the wall, now I have to go back and have to change the plywood um, software. I really should have paid more attention to my basement plan before I started to adapt to those other things. So these are all changing things. These can't be. Uh, this maybe could be. That for now, let's take a look at the first one and look what happened if we change the dynamic. So let's change that to like nine foot four. So the basement guys is the back of the air because the air is far in, but that one will come up. Should be like connecting the dimension. That passes this one up. So that should be three foot six. So I think if I activate this, then I should change this first. Then I have to change this one up. Well, I've changed my countertop and my cabinets, I guess I'm going to be in a slightly different location. Yeah, I see that's a basic wall, so I didn't know the first floor. Because that's not a stacked wall, so let's go and take a look at that. So I have to fix that now. Let's change this back to in line. Put it over here. This. That this should line up with this is the second line of this wall. Oh, this wall is on an angle. Is that true? Okay, so let's look at the basement. Oh, that's a street. Why am I seeing the other line in the background? That second line is back to this street. And this is okay, but it's this. It's just this one. So that one lines up there. That's not going to be a section of anything. So this wall. So there's that wall. I'm not sure what the other one is, but this is coming after the other one. So this guy has to line up now. So this guy over here is going to have this guy line up. So if I 
society will perhaps apply again. Back to the question. That's going to change. Changes my tune, so that's so it's just the basic law, it's not a stack law, so the entire law. This is the of the brick and the inside face of the siding, siding glass. So I fix those two. This argument is going to be on his So these two really should be correct as well. So that's seven point ten. Section. So I don't know how to cut this one. So I put this one, this one has to be there. So that one I would have to put this one. So make sure that I'm not looking at it. All This were a fractional number. Let's see what we have here. They're not going to form from 24 to 24. There's going to be a little bit of an overlap. But look at the first floor. Let's see how that looks. Let's see how that looks. In order for these ball assemblies to line up, I've got those other dimensions that we have to have. So What's going to happen is it might be off. They might actually clear that 24 foot two. So they put this guy, and this guy be 24 foot two. But the mason was 
block work on top of that wall. And then the carpenter puts the wood framing on top of the base of this wall. We'll adhere to the proper dimensions of the yard. This is what it's supposed to be, and I won't show to the to the this is a basement contractor, this is a trench on the very well be to the companies doing that, but I want to make sure that I show you all the concrete on the wall and people for the right dimensions. So that looks good. That, that was just set up to put in the floor. So now I can come into my uh, floor. So I'm going to ask that architecture for the floors are going to be my ground. So now let's see. It's a little bit of you know, stuff to do, but anyway, let's put that floor out. Or I want to have a so I want my oak to be definitely showing. So that means we take this guy and make that oak go. Then we'll come over here. The thickness of that oak is three quarters. And the material. So that's how I would surface the wall material in this room. So that's the material. Okay. Now, where do I want that oak? Well, now again, the oak goes in after the gypsum board is placed. So it's not going to go in. At the base of the gypsum board. Let's see if it's. Uh, yeah, I'm still going to put it in with the hole. So it's going to place the stock. I'll change it to marble. But for this, what is this? It's, I'm going to take it into the break room. Let's go over. So you notice I went behind the casing because the wood floor, I think we go in first and then the casing will go in afterwards. That's not true. So I'm just going to the casing will go to the inside because I'm sure I'm going to get that. I want the accuracy as much as possible. Material take on there. Make sure that I got the proper screen because it's won't change it for me substantially. Like so, inside of the case, and by the outside of the case, and by the results. So, this is my question which one. So like this, now I don't want to go to the back Hard surface like a tile or a bunch of grass or something that withstand the destructive properties of the soil. Not, 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 
Bernard was so uncomfortable when she went for that, but I don't trust that anything that she stands up to so. But Kyle. So what we knew anyway, what I knew anyway, was that the right time and grace height of the oak was about to be some version of the oak or I guess anything about right now the top of the oak is the top of the bark of the sub. Rather just any way to put your materials and occupy the same space. Instruction got in the face just to be sure. So now I just draw it to the tread. It would go to the tread that dash line is the rise. Again, the chips the board goes in first. So the tile is not going to extend beyond the base of the chips.
Definitely want the hard surface inside. Possibly to have solved by this. And this is an interesting issue here. Bring that up. Second, I showed the section is the tile of the road. As far as this elevation of the surface. So we really when we put in our subfloor, we really need to have to raise subfloor where the carpet and the oak are. Or we have to drop the subfloor where the tile is here for the carpenters to drop. And then the opposite, which is raised the door from the house. What that means is they have to have it flows with that. So I have the tiles in the correct elevation. So it's just a regular section to make it look more beautiful. And you can see the tile needs to be raised up. Seeing that highlighted in the background, that's how we get the kitchen. But look at the difference in the elevation change. So often the contractor will put a threshold between the two materials to hide that elevation change. But what we'll do is we'll drop the sub floor, well, probably on time, but I'll check. And here's a look at the uh, rendered version. You can see the gray room. Stairs going up, nice big long foyer, breakfast, you know, public pantry, breakfast nook in the kitchen, family room, which probably will extend out back hall stairs. There's a garage coming from there. If you walk the block, you get back hall stairs. Back of the lab, then out into the main part of the house, office, 